Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom, and I'm Mike. And Mike is here today, substituting for Stephanie. She's on holiday today, and for a couple more days. Welcome, Mike. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's nice to have you as well. And today we're going to be talking about voting because I guess the presidential election is coming up here real soon, right? Absolutely, it's coming up very soon in a, just about a week, I think, in the future. Of course, it's a very exciting time here in Taiwan. We get to vote. For For a new president every four years, and then in the following years, in between those, there's votes for local legislators, mayors of cities, and other important jobs. But when we're voting, we are definitely doing something that people in Taiwan can do. Not everyone in every country can, and it's a great thing to follow an election and the voting process in Taiwan because here people are really. Enthusiastic and keen about it, and it's not always that way in in Canada or the states where people have been voting for a long time. But in today's article, we're going to be finding out that people have been voting for much longer than you might imagine. Yes,、uh, for two thousand years. That's、uh, right. That's the title of our article for today: "Casting a Ballot: Two Thousand Years of Voting." And this is appropriate, as Mike said. An election is coming up here—a presidential election. So I'm sure you're all excited about that. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's read the entire contents of today's lesson one time. Taiwan's presidential election takes place this month. Millions of people will vote to decide who will be president for the next four years. But how did we arrive at the idea of voting as a method of electing our leaders? One of the earliest democracies was established in Athens, Greece, over 2,000 years ago. Citizens would gather at a hill called the Pnyx to discuss policies and vote on them. There were between 30,000 and 60,000 citizens, but not all residents of Athens were eligible for citizenship. Women, slaves, foreigners, and men under 20 were excluded. Any citizen could propose an idea, such as a new law. Voting was done with small stones. Two pots were set up, and citizens placed their stone in the pot that marked their choice, yes or no. Later, bronze tokens replaced stones, while in other cases, votes were made by a simple show of hands. One interesting custom in Athens was that of negative voting. Each year, citizens voted to kick out their unpopular peers. If the most unpopular citizen received more than 6,000 negative votes, they would be exiled for 10 years. Choices were written on broken pieces of pottery. These pieces were called ostraca, which is the origin of the word ostracize, to cast out from society. From ancient Greece, the idea of democracy spread to Rome. There, people voted by giving the name of their preferred candidate to an official. Originally, the name was spoken, but this was changed to a system in which voters wrote the candidate's initials on a small wax tablet. Eventually, paper replaced wax, and in essence, the same system is still in use today. Okay, let's get to it, everybody. Let's talk about the contents of today's lesson. The title is "Casting a Ballot: Two Thousand Years of Voting." Now, here we've got the word "ballot" used together with the verb "to cast." To cast a ballot—that just basically means to vote. And the ballot is generally the piece of paper that you write your vote on. Absolutely, and two thousand years of voting shows us that this process of choosing our leaders by elections, by voting, by casting ballots. Ballots goes back a really long time, but let's look at the present to begin our article off. It says Taiwan's presidential election takes place this month. Absolutely, it does. We're going to be voting for a president, and anything that we、uh, talk about relating to the president, the adjective for would be presidential. So, a presidential speech, a presidential visit, a presidential trip. These are all things that would involve the president. In this case, the president of Taiwan. And yeah. In Taiwan, next week, millions of people will vote to decide who will be president for the next four years. As we mentioned in the introduction, there are presidential elections or votes for a new president every four years in Taiwan, and that's the same as in America, right? But different years, but a four-year period. 
Yeah, the same here in Taiwan in 2020 or 2020. There's a presidential election in the USA, but y'all don't have presidential elections where you're from, Mike Canada, right? No, that's right. We do have elections, but we call them what would we call them? Parliamentary elections. We have a slightly different.、Uh, Form of government, we don't pick the president directly, and our votes can be held kind of between three to six years, but four or five is about an average. Okay, very good. But、uh, of course, America has a presidential election,、mm-hmm. as does Taiwan, and it happens. It takes place this month in just a couple of days. So get ready for that. Millions of people will vote to decide who will be president for the next four years. Are you going to re-elect Tsai Ing-wen, or are you going to elect someone else? But we have a question here. How did we arrive at the idea of voting as a method of electing our leaders? So here we have. Arrive at? Does that mean you actually get to your destination? Well, when you arrive at something in this way, no, you're not actually traveling. It basically means this is what you decide after thinking about a lot of different choices and options, looking at the things you do. We often arrive at decisions. We arrive at an agreement. We arrive at a conclusion. So all of these sorts of things show the arriving at part is the thinking about it, talking about it, maybe changing your mind once or twice, and then you. Finally, after this long process, you reach a final decision or conclusion, or in this case, an idea. So, basically, the idea of voting has changed and developed over many, many years. Yep. How did we come up with this idea of voting as a method of electing our leaders? So here, to elect as a verb just means to select our leaders, usually in an election when people vote. There you go. Now, next paragraph. One of the earliest democracies was established in Athens, Greece, over two thousand years ago. Yeah, this is a very important piece of history for the world, especially the Western world, Europe. Everyone knows that Greece. Greece is famous, and lots of tourists go to Athens every year to look at the old buildings and the ruins, the Parthenon, the Acropolis. Two thousand years ago, they basically invented democracy, and a democracy is a country where the leaders of the country, the rulers of the country, are chosen by the people through voting. Now, it's not a king; it's not someone who is chosen by God or who's the leader because their father or mother was the king or queen. No, a democracy is a society or a, a culture where people. Choose their leaders by voting, and that's why Greece is so important. This whole idea began there two thousand years ago. Right, democracy—that's the noun. Democratic is the adjective. We could say it was a free democratic election, for example.、Hmm. And I think I've also heard this somewhere. India is the world's largest democracy. I've heard them make that claim before. That's why their elections take weeks instead of just happening in one day. It's interesting, but、uh, of course, Athens was the first place this took place, two thousand years ago. Citizens would gather at a hill called the Nix. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It's It's a hill in Athens, I guess, and they would go there to discuss policies and vote on them. So here we've got the word policy, which generally regards course of action that the government is going to take. And of course, there are different policies that governments have. And here they would discuss these policies, and then they would have an election. They would vote on them. Do you support this or are you against it? There were between thirty thousand and sixty thousand citizens, but not all residents of Athens were. Were eligible for citizenship, so this is kind of showing us how democracy has changed over the time. If you went back to the time of、uh, ancient Greece, if you were voting in Athens, not every person who lived there, not every person who called that place home, was eligible for citizenship or eligible to vote. We'll learn about that in a second. But to be eligible for something, this adjective basically means you're allowed to do something or you are able to do something because of the rules, because of the law. Or something like that. If you live in Taiwan, you're not always eligible to get a, a passport or to vote in an election. Tom and I both live here, but he's American. I'm from Canada, so we're not legally allowed to get a Taiwan passport or to vote in an election. We're not eligible for that because we weren't born in this country. That's the important thing. If you're not eligible, the rules say you can't do something for a reason. If you're eligible. Go ahead. You tick all the boxes. You are able to do that thing. You're allowed. 
I get asked this question all the time. Hey,、mm. you've got a permanent resident certificate, right? Are you eligible to vote?、Mm. I get asked that question a lot. I suppose you do too, right? I do too. Yeah. No, we're not eligible to vote because we're not、um, citizens, I guess, of the country, right? We're residents. We live here, but we're not from Taiwan. But you would still be eligible to vote in America, though, right? Yes, if I get an absentee ballot.、Yeah. But、so、we'll talk about that later on. So let's continue talking about the elections in Africa. Athens here. Uh, it goes on to say, women, slaves, foreigners, and men under twenty were excluded. That doesn't sound like a democracy to mm, me. Mm, that's a little different. It is okay. So here we've got the verb to exclude. That just means you don't allow someone to do something, or you don't allow them access to something. For example, if you want to join an exclusive club, you might be excluded because you don't have enough money, or because you don't know enough people. I could say one time I was excluded from going to a fancy party,、mm -hmm. but they denied me access. I was excluded because I was wearing a clown costume. Oh、uh, yeah, you can't usually get into. A fancy dinner dressed like a clown. I thought it would be funny, but they didn't think so. Were, were you entertaining at the party, or just going? No, to I just、dinner? thought it would be a joke, but it, unfortunately,、yeah. it was I, very misguided. I would probably exclude you from my party too if you looked like that. Maybe people think you're from that horror movie, It. Anyway,、yeah. let's get back to the story. So yes, people were excluded. I mean, women were excluded from voting in many Western countries until about a hundred years ago. True and, true. and even now, young people are excluded from voting in Taiwan. Taiwan. I think if you're under what twenty, you can't vote in Taiwan. You're excluded. But back in Athens, people were excluded if they were a certain age, if they were women, slaves, foreigners, things like that. Now, if you could vote, if you were one of these people, an older man from Athens, basically any citizen, that would be the people who could vote. They could propose an idea, such as a new law. So the people were kind of like the politicians. If you wanted to do something different in your country, you could propose it. You did. Didn't have to be a member of the government. And how did they vote? Well, since it was 2,000 years ago, they used a pretty simple way. Voting was done with small stones. Two pots were set up, and citizens or voters placed their stone in the pot that marked their choice: yes or no. So they would basically have two pots, maybe different colors or with a sign on it. One's for yes, one's for no, and then you would put your stone in the choice that you wanted to make. Sounds like a lot of fun. Maybe that would encourage more people to vote nowadays. True, but there was a bit of a problem with it. I think, right? Indeed. So they probably changed the material of、yeah. the votes. It says later bronze tokens replaced stones, while in other cases votes were made or votes were cast by a simple show of hands.、Mm. You could just raise your hand. Who supports this policy? Yes, no, and who doesn't, etc. But here, of course, we're talking about the change of the material for the voting. Bronze tokens were later used, and they replaced stones. Bronze is a kind of metal which is mostly copper with a little bit of tin, and it's third place in the Olympics. If you get third place in an event, then it's gold, silver, and bronze. That's right. So I guess they used bronze because you can imagine if everyone was voting with stones, it would be easy to kind of pick up a handful of stones and give yourself many votes. Votes. So by having special tokens or by counting people's hands, that was an easy way to make sure no one was cheating and you know playing funny business with this election. And to make sure there's no funny business here, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back for the second half of today's article. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. 今天我们要看的是第二单元。我们要谈的是投票。这跟台湾目前正热闹的投票有关系。我们要选总统了，那为什么会有投票这件事？民主制度怎么来的？我们就看一下内容所介绍的。首先呢，我们知道在台湾每四年要选一次总统，那我们就要来想想这个选举制度从何而来。所以第二段一开始就提到 ，one of the earliest democracies。最开始的民主国家之一，那就是在希腊的雅典。希腊这个国家，他们实行民主制度是最早的。那他们怎么做呢？下面就说到了，在希腊呢，他们呢
会在叫做 p e n e x 的地方聚集。这里呢，他们就要讨论说，我们接下来要实施的政策应该怎么办？所以就会有投票的制度。好，我们看到这句，他提到讨论 policies。And vote on them. This them, T H E M. We know the noun phrase, the preposition, is the noun that precedes the noun. Like this them, noun phrase, is very clearly referring to the preceding policies. This is the first point. 第二点呢，这句话呢，我们要看一下这个动词 vote。我们知道 vote 当动词就是投票。如果你后面的介系词是 vote for， 那就是你是投票要支持什么政策或支持谁。如果你加了 against， 哎，那就是。投票要反对谁？反对某一个政策。那这边是 on。如果你是 vote on， 这个意思啊，就是就什么来投票。你可以是 vote on the new law， vote on the policy。好，我们继续往下读。下面就说到，不过在当时啊，在雅典的时候，可不是每一个居民都可以投票的。如果你是女性，你是奴隶，你是外国人，还有在二十岁以下的男性也没有投票权。好，我们注意到这边 ，not all residents of Athens。这个 not all， 我们知道这种是一种部分否定的用法，当然跟中文解释起来也是一样的，不是每一个人，不是全部的人，那就是表示部分有，部分没有，所以我们说它是部分否定。We're going to take a short break now, but please stay tuned. We'll be right back. 嗯。Interesting. Each year, citizens voted to kick out their unpopular peers. So basically, everybody in Athens really didn't like. Maybe that guy who was selling olives, who was always selling you bad olives and charging you extra money for them. Just an unpopular, unloved person. They could vote to get that person kicked out. To Send them out of the city. That's pretty unusual. Of course, this was for your peers, though. This was for other people who could vote. So I guess you couldn't vote against a woman or a young person, which seems fair because those people can't vote. But if there was another person who could vote, and a lot of people didn't like them, that's who they could vote out. Because a peer is basically someone who's equal to you, right? Who's sort of on the same level as you in some way. If you go to a school and you're a student, the other students are your peers. If you work as a doctor, then other doctors, both in your hospital or in other places, also you could call them your peers. We might also use a colleague or something like that. So it's someone who's kind of similar to you. Now, if we're talking about someone with a lot of power and money, like the president of a big company, and someone without a lot of power and money, like a guy who sleeps on the street, they might not be peers because the power and level of one person is so much higher. And of course, in that kind of situation, if the powerful Man was using his power to hurt the person with no power. We would consider that kind of unfair. But if the people are equal, like these voters in Athens, then they're peers. So I guess it's just sort of meaning: be careful who you、uh, make angry. You know, be careful who you upset, because next year they could vote to kick you out of the city. They could vote you out or kick you out. You can get kicked out of a party, for example, if you're behaving badly. If you show up in a clown costume. Yeah. If I were let into that party, I surely would have gotten kicked out. But here in the next sentence, it says, if the most unpopular citizen received more than six thousand negative votes, they would be exiled for ten years. Whoa, ten、so, years! It's a long time. Exile here is a verb, just means you're kind of kicked out of a place and you're not allowed back. That's kind of different from banishment. 
different. Banishment means you go to a specific place and you can't come back, but exiled means you just can't come here anymore. You got to stay away. You can go anywhere else, but just not here. Yeah, very interesting. So, how did this voting work? Well, it was a little different from when they were voting for their leaders or voting for laws. It says choices were written on broken pieces of pottery. I guess that makes sense. You can't just vote yes or no because you have to write the person's name. And if six thousand people write the same name, then that person's in trouble. So to have something to write the name on, they used broken pieces of pottery. Remember, broken pots were very common back then. Everything from water to oil to wine would come in pots. So they had lots of broken pots lying around, and these pieces were called ostraca, which is the origin of the word. Ostracize to cast out from society. There you go. That is a modern English word. When we ostracize someone, we sort of exile them. We cast them out. We send them away. We tell them very clearly that we don't like them and we don't want them here, and they must leave. That's basically what it is to exile someone to cast them out. It can be a very cruel thing to do, but sometimes it can be the right thing to do. For example, if that person is very dangerous and is going to hurt other people, we might ban. Banish them, cast them out, or exile them. Indeed. So, for example, if you have radical political views, you might be ostracized by society. They will cast you out. They won't want to talk to you. They won't want to buy you a drink. And here, in the next paragraph, it says, "From ancient Greece, the idea of democracy spread to Rome, which I guess is right next door to Greece. There, Rome, of course, was centered in Italy. There, there, people voted by giving the name of their preferred candidate to an official." So they just basically tell somebody in the government, "Hey, I like Mix, Mister X. I want him to be my representative." Yeah. And originally, it says the name was spoken, but this was changed to a system in which voters wrote the in- candidate's initials on a small wax tablet. So again, they used to say the name of the person they wanted to vote. Then they changed that, and they had them writing down the candidate's initials. So instead of writing down, for example, Julius Caesar, you would write. Write the letters J for Julius and C for Caesar on a wax tablet, which was kind of their version of writing paper or something like that. But eventually, paper replaced wax, and in essence, the same system is still in use today. So there we go. We're still thousands of years ago, but the Romans were voting in much the same way we did. They would write down the name of they want, the name of the person they want. They would write it on a small piece of paper, and then at the end, they would count those papers and choose a winner. So. So, in essence, in the most basic but important ways, the same system is still in use today. When we talk about something, the essence of something, yeah, it's the most basic part of it, but the most important part of it. All right. So, for example, you could say the essence of Halloween is wearing a scary costume and going trick or treating. You can do a lot of other things, but those are the basic parts of it: scary costumes, scary decorations, and getting candy from your neighbors. That's the essence of that holiday. My- My goodness, that sounds like fun. I wish I were young enough to go trick or treating again,、mm. but unfortunately, I can't. You might be ostracized. Yeah, well, I could dress as a clown and try that, but I'd still be kicked out. I would be cast out. I would be ostracized, etc. And back to the word initial here. Of course, those are the first letters of your name, which、uh, might cause some confusion if you're voting. So nowadays, of course,、mm. we've got the full name. Although I think here in Taiwan, they mark the ballot by using some kind of stamp. That's got a circle that kind of、oh, looks like a、yeah. peace sign missing one line or something like that. Okay. So you got to make sure you get that printed right on the paper inside the box. It cannot go over the lines, or it doesn't count. Well, that's very true. Even today, around different parts of the world, there are different ways to vote. The old paper ballot, when they give you a piece of paper with everyone's name on it. In the West, generally we put an X next to the person's name. You have to be able to clearly read that X, right? You can't go in and draw a little smiley face or write down your name or anything like that. Put a very clear X. In some places, they've moved to computer voting,、mm-hmm. right, to save paper and things like that. And then in some parts. 
parts of the world where elections are still not quite accepted. You know, these are countries sort of changing from a place that didn't have elections to where they do have them now. They often give people a thumbprint, right, to make sure it really is you. They don't want people cheating in any way. So you dip your thumb in some ink, and then you mark the piece of paper, and that way they can check to make sure it really is you who voted. So from back in the old days of ancient Greece and ancient Rome, right up until now, elections are, are very efficient and fair way of choosing leaders. But cheating on elections has always been a problem, and it still is today. It is, but I'm impressed by Taiwan's record in this regard. Even though there have been、mm. some recounts, pretty much the election process is pretty clean. Okay, that、yeah. brings us to the end of our lesson for today. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher once again. 我们提到了民主制度的来源，这个投票啊，从希腊的雅典谈起。当时呢，这样子的投票是。造成我们今天所有民主国家里面，我们实施的一个政策跟制度。那接下来呢，他就提到，在雅典这里有一个很有趣的习俗，我们就看这句话里头说到 ，one interesting custom custom 是习俗，但是后面还有哦 ，in Athens。Was that of negative voting? 这种否定的投票是指什么？其实他们是要放逐别人。当你不想让某某人待在这个地方，你可以透过 negative voting 把这个人放逐出境。但是我们要注意到文法上句构上这边提到 that。Off. 我们晓得说到指称词，你取代前面提过的东西，最常见的就是代名词。但是如果像是 that 或者是 those， 它们还是一种指示的代名词，而这种代名词代替的是前面提到过的整个状况或是一个片语里面的一部分哦，就是那一部分在后面你不要再提第二次，所以你用单数的 that 来取代前面提过的单数名词，而你用复数的 those 来取代前面提过的复数名词。像这个地方 that 指的就是 custom。这边讲的是 negative voting 的这个 custom 很有趣，它下面就解释当时呢，你如果有一个人很不受欢迎，然后他有超过六千张这种票，那他就被放逐个十年。这个制度它里面说到有一个字，淘气的碎片，然后这个碎片呢，在希腊文里面叫做 a s t r o c a 在英文里有一个字 o s t r a c i z e o s t r a c i z e 的来源就是来自这个希腊文的 a s t r o c i z e Ostraca, ostracize 就代表 cast out， 也就是放逐 ，to exclude somebody from the society。那么最后这一边，他就提到了民主思想从希腊开始，后来传到了罗马。在罗马这个地方，他们也有所谓的投票制度。他们的投票制度是说，你要在一个小蜡片上写上了。候选人的姓名、首字母，后来呢还用纸取代的蜡。那本质上，这也就是我们看到的民主制度。不过，在这一段里面，我们要特别看到一个地方，也就是当你说到这个制度啊，说 This was changed to a system in which in 再加 which。当然，我们知道这个 which 指的就是前面的这个 system， 但是。后面要讲的就是在这个制度里面是怎么做的，所以 in this system 我们变成关系词句，就是 in 加 which。好，我们今天讲解就到这边结束，谢谢您的聆听。That brings us to the end of our lesson for today, but please join us again next time when we continue to talk about voting. Please join us then. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Mike. Goodbye. Take care.